Welcome to May Favorites. I'm sorry if the lighting is a little bit strange. I do have a softbox light happening, but yeah, the struggle is always real. With finding time to film videos and the weather cooperating. Anyway, let's just get into what I've been loving all month. So by way of skincare, I have started to notice that my skin is requiring significantly less heavy products. It's really been this month that that's happened too. So I'm finding that I actually, as a former dry skinned person, this is very exciting, am producing oil in sort of this region of my face. Actually, I'm on the hunt for a good touch up powder. If any of you have good, clean, luxe recommendations, please leave them in the comments. Something very finely milled that I can take on the go, so I prefer for it to be pressed, but anyway. That's not why we're here, for me to solicit your recommendations. Two new products that have sort of become part of my routine this month are the La Bella Figura Crema Supernova Vitamin C Day Cream. My friend Lauren sent me this in a package she recently sent me, and I've been using this instead or interchanged with my Audacity Day Cream, which I really, really like. This is actually a bit heavier than that, so I'm kind of contradicting myself saying I'm into lighter skincare, but I have I have been enjoying this. From what I understand, it's a low dose of vitamin C that's safe to use during the day. And the more that I learn about skincare and vitamin C and skincare, there's pros and cons to using it during the day and at night. You want to use a much lower concentration of vitamin C during the day. You can use higher concentrations at night. But anyway, I've been liking this product. It has a very sort of light, weird scent, but I enjoy it. And then the other thing I've been getting a lot of use out of is the Laurel Whole Plant Organics Antioxidant Face Serum. So this was actually a previous Beauty Heroes Hero product before I started working with them, but my friend Rue, who has been a brand ambassador longer than I have, received this, couldn't use it because it has rosehip oil in it, and gave it to me. So I've been really enjoying it. I've been using this in the morning, sometimes at night too, but in the morning instead of my Mangosteen skin owl mangosteen beauty drops it's a little bit lighter i love the mangosteen beauty drops but they are becoming too heavy for me to use during the day i do still love using those at night but this is a very sort of lightweight oil i think it's perfect for morning and or evening in the spring summer months when it's warmer so i really like this you can get this in the beauty hero shop too two other little skincare products i've been enjoying these also came from my friend lauren are by the brand Isen. I soon, I never know how to pronounce these and I'm sure I always sound like such a moron. Especially when I say Christopher Robin for that hair care line in my wish list video. It's like Christophe Robin or something like much more chic sounding. I feel like I sounded like such a moron, but anyway. Alive and ageless skincare, I have the Emerald Sun Hydrosol in a sort of deluxe sample and the Ultra Sapphire Age Revitalizing Moisturizer for Sensitive Skin. They carry this, I had never really heard of this brand, but they do carry it on the online boutique to end all boutiques beauty habit, which if I could have a shopping spree anywhere, it would be to beauty, beauty habit. They carry this brand there, knew nothing about them, but I've been enjoying these two products. They remind me so much of topical ointments that my acupuncturist has given me in the past to treat eczema and psoriasis. Really just eczema. I haven't had psoriasis in a very, very long time, but um, well, I've had recurring eczema breakouts on my body in the past, and my acupuncturist has given me topical things to treat that, and the, these remind me of like Chinese medicine ointments, I guess. They're pleasant, they're very herbal, medicinal smelling, but not in the traditional, like how you would think those products smell. They're good and I like them. And actually they do feel very lightly nourishing to the skin. That's another reason I've been liking them because they're sort of lighter, I guess. Okay, one last skin thing. I threw this in at the last minute, but I just, it has been a favorite and I'm a broken record talking about it, but it's Mahalo's The Petal Mask. I don't know, like I have just been completely, this is like one of my top skincare products of all time, I think. I have never noticed such a remarkable difference in the texture and appearance of my skin between using this and the Mahalo Vitality Elixir and like really all of the Mahalo products, except for the Pele mask, that has never done it for me for some reason. But I use this probably every other day 
I don't I feel like every time I use it I wake up I use it at night and I wake up in the morning and my skin is just like nice I just I love it it's a very gentle resurfacing beta hydroxy treatment mask it's also profoundly moisturizing like if I were to recommend one skincare treatment product to people I'm pretty sure it would be this I just I'm gonna continue singing the praises of it because I've just seen such profound results from using it Okay, that's it for skincare. In terms of other, I have a couple makeup things, although not really much this month because I haven't really been wearing a lot of makeup, I'll be honest. But in terms of, I have a few body and hair care things. I'm a huge, huge fan of the La Vanilla deodorants. I know they're not perfectly clean, but I just, I've been using this deodorant for like 10 years at this point. And I, I'm someone that likes to layer deodorants, so a lot of times I'll do more natural, sort of stronger deodorant, like Schmitz, and then I like putting this over top, but lately I've really just been using this, and it seems to work fine in terms of odor protection. The reason I'm mentioning it today is because this is the first time I had ever tried the vanilla lemon scent, and it's so... I love it. I, lo I Honestly, I love all the scents. I previously thought the vanilla blackberry and the vanilla passion fruit were my favorites, I don't know if I really have a favorite, but this is just very, like, fresh and kind of unisex smelling. It doesn't smell like lemon at all. Like, at all. It's just very uh, fresh, but not in, like, a cotton fresh. It's unique and really nice. I find La Vanilla really hard to get a hold of in the sense that you like, because I feel like they sell out constantly on Sephora. But I actually just purchased a backup of this particular scent because I like it so much. Two hair things to mention. I went for a full-size bottle of the Inner Sense Pure Harmony Shampoo, a gentle cleansing hair bath for fine to normal hair. I had gone through two sort of deluxe samples of this that Andy the Green Queen had given me. And I need to do an updated hair care routine. I've been getting some requests to do that, which, by the way, I find absolutely hilarious because I never, I mean, my hair is literally the bane of my existence. I say this all the time, but I don't think I have nice hair. I like the color and that's about it. But it just, it's, it's a challenge. My hair is such a challenge. So I don't really like talking about it and I don't really like showcasing my hair, I guess. But I have been, I mean, I did hair care videos like the first couple months I was making YouTube videos. Like you can go watch those old videos if you want. They're like quite embarrassing, I'm sure at this point. But my routine has changed up. And one of the main ways it's changed up is that I do like a double cleanse with my hair. Similar to double cleansing your face, I double cleanse my hair. And I have just found it's made such a big difference to the, the performance and longevity of styles that I do. So basically I'll do like a pre-wash or a first wash with something like Wonder Seed. And then I do a second wash, always with the inner sense. And it just... So what I feel happens is with the first wash, the first pre-wash, that's what gets sort of all the dirt and oil and dry shampoo and product away. And then this product is what really cleanses my hair. So my hair gets just super clean and like almost gently clarified in a way. I don't know. I'm obsessed. So this product is incredible. I think it would be fine to use just as a single wash. I mean, everyone's hair is so individual, but I'm going to save the rest of the hair chat just for another video. One more hair product though is a recent empty product. It's a sample travel size of the Yurok Feed Your Volume Conditioner. I've gone through two or three full sizes of this. Favorite conditioner of life. I love this. I like it better than the accompanying shampoo or not even. I just, there's shampoos like the Inner Sense and Wonder Seed that I like better than the Yurok Feed Your Volume Shampoo, but I've never found a conditioner that I like better than this one. So it, everything from the smell to the performance, I feel like it moisturizes my hair without weighing it down, which is a big issue for my hair type. But yeah, if I could recommend one eco conditioner for people with fine to medium textured hair, I would recommend this. The nail polish I can't seem to get enough of, I think I mentioned this like two favorites videos ago, is Essie Geranium. It is on my nails right now. I just, I've painted my nails at least two or three times during the month of May with this color. It's, the performance is incredible too of this polish and I haven't really loved Essie polishes in the past. I don't, 
I don't even know if they're five free, they might be three free. But if anyone has like an eco rack for a dupe for SE Geranium, please tell me. It's a tomato red, orange red, and it's just perfect. I feel like it goes with, it actually really doesn't go with what I'm wearing today. I was just going to say it goes with everything. It doesn't really go with everything, but with actually something I'm going to show you in a little bit. It's just been going with my like springtime into summer May style vibes, I guess. So yeah, I've been loving this. And then two lip products, Nudus 27 Kisses. I am wearing it today. It's not a very spring or summertime appropriate color, honestly, but it's much more suited to fall and winter in my opinion. It's on, on me, it's very sort of a, I, and also when I've seen it back, when I've been wearing it on videos, it looks darker in person than it's coming across on video a lot of the time. It's sort of a brownie, mauve, rosy mauve on me. And, but I really like it. Love the formula. Talked about it in like several previous videos. So it's definitely been a favorite this month. And then the other thing I feel like I've been reaching for really just this color family is this is Bite Beauty Coolie. I used it in my minimal weekend makeup look last week. I just have been really liking this color. I don't, it's not like a fire engine red. It's kind of like a raspberry leaning red. Works really well as a stain. I love these matte lip crayons. Unfortunately, this color and like everything in that set was limited edition around the holidays. So moral of the story is when Bite comes out with limited edition sets, we should probably buy them if they're special colors. <laughs> okay, now a few lifestyle things. And to circle back to what I was talking about when I mentioned Essie Geranium going with everything, it really goes with my favorite clothing piece since I've purchased it. And I've worn it in like at least two previous videos. I wish I could wear it in every video because I wanna like live in this thing. And it's the J. Crew. Uh, it's it has a special name. They call it chambray. It, it looks sort of denim-ish, but it's called like the, no, oh, I forget. I'm gonna butcher the name. Okay, so I just looked it up. It's the J. Crew Always Chambray shirt. I got this when J. Crew was doing a 30% off and this was not excluded. So I got it for like $50, which I actually think is pretty good. We'll see how long it lasts. I love it. I've been, if I could live in this and my Lululemon, Align tights. I am like blanking on the name of everything. I showed them in a previous video. Yeah, I think that they're, they're the Align legging tights. I've been wearing this with those on the weekend. I've been wearing this with my Articles of Society white jeans going out. Yes, it's before Memorial Day. Zero Fs given. This is just such a nice wardrobe staple. It's super comfortable. It's washed up really well. It doesn't need to be ironed. It's sort of distressed and casual and I'm obsessed with it. I have one YouTube channel favorite and it's called Style Like You. A viewer of mine left me a comment, I think on Instagram, and I'm pretty sure it was Sue, 9TO or something, I, I forget, but I, I'm pretty sure that that's who told me about it. It's not really a beauty channel, it's more one of these thought-provoking docu-series type of channels and it's quite an old channel it's been going on for like five years i think but in the last year or so they've been doing something called the what's underneath project which i'm all about this kind of let's get real and honest and raw and like human interest stories i've been into, i used to watch like 2020 all the time when i was like 12. They're having, I don't know how they, they find these people, but they're, they're, they just kind of seem like normal people. Some of them work in the fashion industry. Some of them, they kind of like run the gamut, PR companies, things like that, models. And these people sit on a stool and they're being interviewed by the producers. And during the course of the interview, they're taking their clothes off until they basically strip down into just like undergarments. <laughs> But they're very powerful. Some of the ones I've seen, the people just seem really like honest and raw and it seems very therapeutic for them as well as therapeutic for the viewer. And I mean, the whole idea is just, you know, you, you have to really truly accept yourself, like f flaws and all, whatever society deems to be your flaws. Like, just like, let's get over that and just, own it and accept it and I don't know I mean I'm sure you know what I'm saying it's the whole like self-love self-acceptance movement but it's done in a very edgy poignant not like traditional oh like self-love way 
So it's really resonated with me and I've been loving watching them, so I thought I would put that out there. And then I've gotten back into regularly reading blogs because I'm back in sort of a more traditional 9 to 5 office environment. So two that I've been super obsessed with all month, Into the Gloss, like I don't know where I've been, I just got out of the habit of reading blogs, but Into the Gloss is my new like daily read addiction. I'm sure that all of you know of it and read it, but I've just gotten back into reading it and I'm, t I'm so obsessed. It's like true pornography for a beauty lover. And I just, I've always loved their concept. I feel like I've been reading them since they started probably, but yeah, I'm very happy to have dedicated time in my day to now get my fix. And then another is an astrology website that came recommended from my viewer and friend, Natalie, who's very, very knowledgeable about intermediate and advanced astrology. And so she and I have exchanged quite a few emails and I've learned a lot actually about how to interpret my own natal chart from her. Kind of, we're both sort of self-taught, self-learning, autodidact astrology students. And the blog is called astroarena12.blogspot.com and I found it because she sent me an article on the Venus-Pluto opposition, which she and I both have in our charts and we each feel that it explains a very integral part of our personalities. The The person that writes the blog posts, I would say, maybe once a week, but it's definitely more like intermediate astrology. It's about house placement and aspects and things like that. So it can be a little bit overwhelming. I wish I had like a good, I get a lot of questions about like how to learn about astrology if you're interested in things like that. I would just say, go to astro.com and get a printout of your natal chart and then maybe do a session with an astrologer so that you can get kind of a basic orientation to parts of your chart. Maybe I'll just do a video on like introductory astrology if you'd be interested. And then for music, my playlist this month is a combination of some new tracks, some that I found from a Michalak vlog. He started the Michalaks. If you don't watch them, they're a family in London and they do weekly lifestyle vlogs with their two-year-old son, Grayson. And Steph, the husband or father, has started putting together a SoundCloud playlist of all the tracks that he uses in the vlogs. And so I like was combing through and I found a couple good tracks off there that will be in the playlist. A couple house tracks, Lee Burridge had a new release and one of those tracks I think is really, really good. And then a couple old tracks. I was DJing the other weekend and I dug into my archives and I was like, oh, I haven't played this in so long. And the crowd was like responsive to them. And I was like, yeah, they've really like stood the test of time. So please let me know what you've been loving this month. I would love to hear, especially in the realm of transitioning your skincare to lighter products. If that, if that is your hemisphere and <laughs> Uh, climate concern as it is mine. So yeah, let me know about your sort of new seasonal skincare as well as pressed powder racks. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are amazing and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye!